Hello and welcome to another day of Advent of Code. This is day 15. And in day 15 we have a cost graph. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, and, oh, there's the follow notification. And the cost graph looks something like this. Um, the goal of the problem is to make a path from the input, which is <clears throat> in the top left, uh, to the bottom right. And each node represents, or each number in this represents a cost for that particular node. Uh, now, some tricky things that you know you wouldn't get out of the or you would get out of the reading if you read closely. The input is not counted, or the the top left is not counted. So don't add this one or whatever number it is in your input to your cost. Uh, and then the answer is the cost that it takes to get to whatever path that you take to get down to here. Um, and for this, uh, there is an algorithm that <laughs> that is optimal for computing this, which is called Dijkstra's algorithm. Um, I have implemented this at some point, did not remember it off the top of my head, uh, and independently derived something very similar to it. <laughs> so my solution here is is not exactly Dijkstra's, but you could just you know implement Dijkstra's algorithm. Um, so I guess the important things that I wanted to cover for this, at least for part one, uh, we will cover a little bit more for part two for this grid expansion, though it's not that complicated. Um, my parsing is basically the same parsing that I've done for any of the other coordinates problems where I uh, produce coordinates at x, y by parsing. Uh, in this case, I keep track of the max values so that I know where I need to end. Uh, and then I use an interesting module called heapq. Uh, so what heapq is, um, oh, actually, this code is buggy. This is supposed to use heapq.push. Wait, why does this work? <laughs> uh, this is not supposed to work as written. This is supposed to use heapq.heappush. Uh, I guess I am getting lucky currently, or... Oh, huh, weird. Anyway, so what, um, what heapq does is it creates a priority queue here. Uh, and so then you use a priority queue based on the cost of your current path, and that will allow you to optimally find the route to the finish. Um, wait, why does this work? That's weird. Anyway, I'll look into that after I finish the recording. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing you know terribly complicated about this. Part two is much of the same. You are still doing the routing. However, it takes all of these grids uh, down here and it expands them out to a five by five grid. So it's much, much larger. And uh, the math for that is, uh, is each of these numbers will have its same number in the next position, but add one for every movement that you make. So like the square directly to the right of this will have plus one, this will have plus two. If you go over one and down one, that'll be plus one, plus two. Uh, and it has a special wraparound rule. Uh, in the wraparound here, 10 becomes one. So it's not quite a mod, which is why I wrote this special little function that does essentially that, that wraparound. And this is how I plotted each of those. So basically, same loop for, for parsing the input values, but I also parse an additional offset by five here. And I compute the width and the height beforehand. They happen to be squares in all of the given inputs, so you could just compute one of them and use that value there. Uh, and then I use these inner five loops to offset by the height and the width and add how far I've moved and do that weird mod thingy. So this is kind of the only difference between uh, part one and part two. But anyway, hopefully you found this useful and I'll see you around for the next day.